Homework 10.2 is of the same nature as homework 10.1. We just have a different sample of flight distances. This one uh, likely from the fall of 2019. So again, I'm going to calculate some of the basic statistics. These uh, should be fairly simple and easy for most people. Go down. This time I'll try dragging it in just for fun. Whoa, it's a little hard to see what I'm doing. That's under there. There we go. 82 to 837. Um, and there are 36, which is what I expect when I go from 2 to 37. The uh, sample mean, of course, I can should calculate that. This is the average function, not the mean function. There is no mean function. And uh, A2 to uh, the A, uh, whoops, full colon, A37, uh, 554. This particular batch of aircraft has flown farther than the 10-1 aircraft, so be careful. Results may differ. Uh, equals the uh, standard deviation. That's available right there. And again, I can do the A2 to A37, 484. Very large standard deviation. Standard error, calculate that, equals the standard deviation, sorry, missed the standard deviation. You have to watch where you click and pay attention. The standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size, which is actually a 6. So that winds up there. Using an alpha of 5%. Calculate the T critical. Well, that's uh, the same calculation we just did in 10.1. Equals to T inverse of uh, 1 minus C or 0 0.05. In this chapter, we shift to calling it alpha. I actually did the homework in 10.1 using the alpha. Probably confused some people, but it's the same difference. N minus 1 will be my degrees of freedom press check it's a little over two that's what I expected slightly bigger than the last one that's what I expected calculate the absolute now the T statistic is the new part of this the T statistic is the distance between the sample mean the 554 and the expected population mean which is up here of 560 this 560 but if i just take the 554 minus the 560 and try to divide that by the standard error i'll have an order of operations error i start with a parenthesis i want to do the difference first and i want the, the absolute value so i'm going to go back here and type in abs abs is the absolute value function so the absolute value of my 554 minus, right there's a minus, the 560. Now I don't have that on my screen, so I'll have to type that in manually. I want the difference first because it's the difference divided by the standard error. It's the difference as measured in standard errors. So that result, press check, that result you see up there, 0.0722 is how many standard errors I am away from the population mean. I'm not even one standard error away. Remember, the standard error is 80, and uh, my, my sample mean is 554. I'm six centimeters below the 560 population mean, and my standard error is 80. So I'm very, very close to the uh, population mean here. You, you can kind of think of this 55480. You can actually, we, we don't do this really in this class because we don't use this one. But if you go into decimals, and don't worry, you don't have decimals. But if I tell it that I have a mean of uh, uh, 554 with a spread of 80, uh, let's do it that way. And then I tell it 
how does that relate to a mean at 560? <laughs> you really can't tell the difference between the mean at 560 and, say, the uh, mean at uh, 554. Uh, five, These two means are very, very close to each other. I go back to take that two out. <laughs> They're indistinguishably close. Um, He's, there's this mean at, at uh, uh, 560, indistinguishably close to the sample mean. In other words, the fall class has thrown airplanes that perform right on par with expected value. Uh, but let's go back. You don't have to do that. That's just trying to sh give you a visual picture of what's going on here. Uh, is the T statistic... Bigger than T critical. Oh no, seven cents is not bigger than two dollars. If you think seven cents is bigger than two dollars, I'll give you seven cents if you'll give me two dollars. I don't think that's a fair trade. This is a lot smaller. So we can answer that. No. Do you reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject? Well, in this case, and when you get confused, come down here. The absolute value is less than. We fail to reject. We don't have a difference here. Uh, the, we don't. We don't have a difference. There's no difference between those two. This is the, the red area is the spread in the sample means at this point. Now, I haven't calculated the 95% confidence interval, but it's going to run out, as you saw, to at least a couple 80s. So it's, it, it's going to run out to like 554 minus 160 up to at least, uh, estimating here, 554 plus 160. Where did they get the 160 from? I doubled the 80. So, I mean, something like that is a 95% confidence interval. The population mean is well within the 95% confidence interval. Uh, I need to shrink it a bit. I'm not quite at 95%. I'm at 9544, so I have, but, uh, but I'm close. 95%. You can see that number way down here. I'm very close to 95%. So, and again, you don't have to use Desmos, but that's the visual that's running in the back of my head as I do this. So I'm going to fail to reject. This is not a yes or no question. I, I cannot reject the null hypothesis. This is a different result than 10-1. In 10-1, we would have rejected. In this one, we failed to reject. These aircraft are performing on par with the historic average of 560. Is the sample mean significantly different? No, that's not, not different at all. Could the population mean value? Sure, yeah, definitely, can be. Population mean probably is 560. In fact, the fall data at 36 planes was so small that it didn't change the population mean, which is based, as I say, on about, as I said in the previous homework, on about 800 aircraft. So we, we failed to reject. We're done. So this is the same process as what we just did in 10.1, essentially. That is, it's a hypothesis test. We've glued on a lot of extra language, and we've glued on the idea of rejecting and failing to reject, um, which is just kind of subtle. But in the end, we've figured out whether or not a sample could have a population mean that we know about and expect. You might be wondering, but Leeling, what if we don't know the population mean? That's what chapter 11 is for. Wait for chapter 11. We got you covered. So have a look at this. See if you can make these calculations and make them correctly. And as always, remember, I teach statistics. I am wrong some of the time. If I make an error, let me know. I don't get upset. I would only be worried if I never make an error. If I never make any errors, that would worry me. As long as I'm making mistakes and errors, I'm doing good. But as I go along, I can kind of check my answers, have an idea of where I'm going to, and that help, helps me to some extent. But I still make mistakes. I just try to catch them, and if I don't, hey, catch them for me and let me know what you see. Be very careful with these T-criticals. Do not put 1 minus C. No. Do not put... Uh, sorry, you can put 1 minus... My bad. You can put 1 minus C, but do not put 1 minus alpha. It says that. Do not use 1 minus alpha in red. You cannot use 1 minus alpha. Alpha is 0.05. 
You can use 1 minus C, you can use alpha, but you can't use 1 minus alpha. <laughs> so get the crazy result. Okay. That's 10-2 in a nutshell.